you all for being here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick introduction and then I'm going to turn it over to some of the other members of the committee and then unfortunately for you, I'll be back up here again later uh, to help with the questions and answers. But the committee's been meeting for a little over two years and change. Um, it's done a lot of real hard work over the past few months and today is kind of a culmination of where we're at. We're at as a collective committee and we're going to be asking you all for input at the end of this today to help us shape the next piece. We don't expect this to be a done deal until we have a new minister and everything else in place. But if we have it shaped and formed, it also informs potentially the new minister who may be called. So that's another reason for asking for all of your participation today and your help. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Connie. Get out of the way. We are excited to be here because this is the first time we've come before the congregation. And that's like that. I usually can. I'm usually told I'm too way too loud. Um, so what you'll be going through today is a background, the overview of the design, the cost, uh, the estimated recapturing of what um, what it would be as we continue with more people interred, um, issues in coordination, and then what we're going to do from the next part on. So, this is what the background, and it's better for me to read it from here. Christians have historically laid their family members to rest in a churchyard adjacent to the church, where they can come to pray, reflect on their loved ones' lives. The memorial garden at Pres the Fredericksburg Presbyterian Church would be created to meet the needs of the members of the church and their families. The Fredericksburg Presbyterian Church Memorial Garden would be a consecrated place for the interment of cremains, a columbarium, and a scatter garden of deceased members of the congregation of their immediate family and others as approved next to the church we love. As any good committee does, we came up with a mission statement. Very Presbyterian of us. And this is our driving force. With believers in every time and place, we can rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. This beginning of the affirmation of faith is what has guided the process of the Memorial Garden of the Presbyterian Church of Fredericksburg. The garden will provide an appropriate and carefully maintained site of interred ash remains. The Memorial Garden is intended to be an outdoor gathering place for reflection, meditation, both individually and as a group. This will give all members of our congregation, both young and old, an opportunity to celebrate eternal life and continue the circle of ministry from birth to death by providing a visible and <clears throat> continuous reminder of the church's important place in the members' lives and their, and their deaths. So at the end of, the, of our lives, it is fitting that the church continues to meet our needs in providing an affordable final resting place for our remains. Internment may be in one of the three ways, and they will all be explained a little later, um, but columbarium, in-ground, which is more a site-specific, which will be done and the scattering of cremains, scatter bar. We began with a survey in 2021 after gathering together. We did go through several, we went through three different designers and came up with a survey and based, formed the congregation so we could decide, is this a good thing? People want it. And based on the results of the survey, the committee met forward and began the initial designs of a columbarium and a scatter garden and a site-specific. This, this is now, this option is now located in the church's plot within the city cemetery of Fredericksburg, which we did not know existed when we first started this. So this is the results of the survey. And even though that there were the red with the no interest, most of the pie was maybes or yes, very interested. And the, of course a lot of maybes were 
We didn't know what was going on. None of us did. What it would look like. And that's why we're here today, to show you what we think it might look like. We began in November of 2021 um, with the permission of session. And in 2022, we presented three designs, renderings, to the session at meetings. And the meeting, the session chose one design for the committee to go forward with more detailed development. And since that date, we've received dozens of church memorial gardens. We've We've gone through anywhere we went, we took pictures, even in Europe. <laughs> we were taking pictures of memorial gardens as well. Um, and there were some relatively small in area, and like the plans for our campus. There are some in town as well. Um, most of the church memorial gardens reviewed offer two forms of internment, either columbariums or a scattered garden, or site specific in a scattered garden. And yeah, this is where we're going. Okay. Now it's up to Jake to show you what these places are going to look like. Good morning. About two years ago, Alan asked me to take a look at some conceptual designs of a memorial garden that were presented by uh, two other groups, and then uh, shortly after that. I joined the committee as a committee member to help the committee um, put together their vision of what they think the memorial garden should look like. And uh, trying to take into account the concerns of the congregation, what they had heard, um, cer certainly always mindful of uh, overall cost. And I have to say, uh, based on my experience, it was a very collaborative effort. And I think uh, the joint vision is one that reflects everyone's input and they can see where they have contributed to the, the overall design. So um, the next set of slides will deal with, uh, in this case, uh, the locator plan, which um, the first, very first slide in the set uh, for the presentation had the overhead view of the church from Google Maps. And this is basically just a drawing of that, but it is a chance to look at kind of an analysis of our uh, beautiful but small uh, church campus and to determine that certain areas were not logical for Memorial Garden. Uh, the largest space along the Princess Anne Corridor would be simply too public and too loud uh, and not be appropriate for a meditative uh, space. On the other side of the sanctuary, um, there, it's primarily the walkways for connection to the buildings, the manse, the classrooms, the education building, and sanctuary. So really the area we focused on uh, was between the rear of the sanctuary and the education building. And um, the uh, walkways have, as you all know, probably recently uh, put together with the concrete and they're beautifully done. So we did not want to interfere with anything that was already existing. So getting down even smaller, the area that we're talking about for the Memorial Garden is 100% contained within the oval that you see right behind the church. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Um, and uh, uh, as you all are familiar, the, the dominant feature within this oval space is the holly tree, which is a fully mature tree that um, there are concerns that the root system is beginning to undermine the utilities that are underneath the tree. Uh, and in terms of doing any type of investment of building a columbarium, the last thing that we want would be a, a storm that would come through and fall on the columbarium as a result of the tree. So uh, going forward, whenever the, if there's a decision to move forward uh, to incorporate the plan, the, the tree would need to be removed. It's a, it, it, no one likes to think of removing a, a healthy tree, and what has been suggested is perhaps uh, planting a couple of trees along the Princess Anne corridor that sort of to offset that. Um, I, the tree, uh, according to the arborist, uh, has reached its full maturity, and um, uh, so taking that into account, 
uh, the overall design is based on the tree not being present. <coughs> Okay, all right, so a little closer look at the, um, uh, the actual site. Uh, what the arrows are pointing to are the underground utilities, the water line, the electric, uh, the um, electrical power connecting for the lamp, which is out in the middle of the space. That lamp, by the way, is tied into the um, uh, night light system. It's not a 24-hour power, so if electrical power is needed to the site, um, that would be a new run of electrical power. We'll also have the sewer lines that run out to the street, so uh, kind of working around that space, uh, these utilities sort of crisscross over the oval, and the central arrow that you see is says the existing alley. It's dead center of the space. Uh, in terms of the overall plan, I do have uh, prints you can look at more in detail. I realize well, on the screen it's a bit fuzzy, but basic, you can hear me if I walk over here, right? Um, so, uh, there, as Connie mentioned, there are, are three aspects of the Memorial Garden that we're addressing. A columbarium, a scatter garden, and site-specific. And initially, site-specific was incorporated into this space but as Connie mentioned, that is now uh, that third element uh, to propose to be located over at the city cemetery. So what you have is the, the white lines are the existing uh, brick walkways. And in the center uh, of this oval, if you will, the columbarium backs up right up to the walkway that is um, sort of behind the sanctuary. We did, in all cases, we looked at multiple designs, multiple design iterations, thinking of the color of uh, different shapes, uh, different places. Uh, should this particular design be a cloistered design where you have to uh, walk into space, or uh, the notion or thinking of the community is that this is an open space that has it's a multi-purpose for being used throughout. Um, in the center of the oval is a hardscape walkway that leads, leads up to the columbarium. Uh, certainly, if there is, uh, we don't want the ground to be wet and that'd be a problem if there's any particular internment or uh, just access that would be prohibited because of wet, soggy ground. Now, flanking the uh, that center, and this would be a brick walkway to match what's existing that's in the white. Um, Flanking it are large, um, raised, slightly raised beds that are the scatter gardens. Uh, and then up in the far right-hand corner of the oval, that little blue square, is a water fountain. Uh, the, the committee felt very strong, feels very strongly that there should be a water element that is uh, reflective of the symbolism for the church, and also just provides some background sound to mediate uh, traffic noise among other things. Okay, so uh, the placement of the columbarium would be tucked around the, uh, the hand railing, if you will, and up against it to the, uh, the, the brick, existing brick walkway. And anything else you do that slide. And here are, are elevation and side and plan views of the um, columbarium. Uh, in terms of the scope of it, it would have initially 80 niches uh, for the columbary, for the urns, uh, flanking the central part. And um, you, probably your immediate reaction is that this looks like the altar of the church. Well, that's intended. It's, it's to kind of bring the inside of the church outside. It, and this, in fact, would be parallel, backing up to the rear of the sanctuary and be reflective of the uh, altar within our beautiful sanctuary. Um, another reason for it stepping down the way it does is part of the planning for a columbarium is trying to determine you know, how big should it be. Uh, we have certainly seen some that are expansive and, and it seems so sterile when there are vast, empty uh, niches. Um, and also, at the same time, it's important to plan for the future. And so, with this particular design, we would introduce two um, columbarium units on either side of the entrance. 
but then also plan for future ones which would go, and that's what on the step down part. Um, the columbarium are granite and steel and they're exceedingly heavy. So the footings for that are critical. And the last thing we'd want to do would be to introduce an addition at a later date and it settles differently and there's not a, a clean alignment of the brickwork. So here you have then the foundation for the whole takes place at one time. There's really probably a very insignificant cost increase to do that. And then cap it with a, um, uh, a slate or just a, a low level of um, stone cap. Um, as you, and also, one of the things we looked at with the columbarium and elsewhere is that when it's a long, expansive piece, um, it, it's not terribly interesting. And so this actually steps in and steps out. The central part I'll talk about later, but I think it provides more interest. And I think perhaps the next rendering uh, gives a little bit more of an impression of what that might look like. I drew in the sky behind the columbarium because if I were to draw the, the rear of the sanctuary, it all would kind of blend it together. But this does give one a sense of the shadows that would be created. And so what you have is the low level columbarium future basis. <coughs> Uh, brick work to match existing education building and the sanctuary. Um, the face of the columbarium niches are uh, eight inches square and they are granite. Uh, the caps or lintels would be uh, precast but would look like the, uh, the limestone that we see a fly limestone, for example. Um, in the central part, uh, it, I, I guess I, I can talk about that a little bit later, but that is uh, a recognition of people who, of the internment of the scatter guard. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, the, um, the individual uh, columbary niches are eight inches square, and the, the way it works in terms of uh, inscription is that you have uh, extra panels that are sent out uh, with a blank one in place. Uh, behind each of these eight inch squares, there's a cavity where up to two urns can be uh, positioned. So uh, the amount of copy on the face would be limited and would be consistent so that it's the same uh, for the scatter garden and for the site specific at the city cemetery. Uh, and it would simply have name, date of birth, and date of death. And if there are two inside the panel, then they would be stacked. Um, it's kind of representative of the, uh, the scale garden. You have the, the brick, existing brick walkways and introduced new. And also, by the way, we're proposing um, several benches um, distributed throughout the, the area for reflection and just for comfort. There will certainly be a a different type of open environment without the large tree there. Um, but in terms of the scatter garden, I'm just kind of picking up a little corner of it. Um, it should be bound, it should have a border, at least a low level border, to keep the contents of the, the soil and the remains separate from the lawn that's area that's nearby. But it also just helps to find that edge um, and uh, re requires a um, uh, mixing of the composition of the, the soil to encourage uh, growth of plants and keeping that throughout. Okay. In the central uh, section of the columbarium, um, we have a we have a brass plaque, and it would be very similar. Uh, it would be a brass plaque for everyone who is in the scatter guard, and um, it this little. Uh, sample is just something I could pull off the screen, but it would be identical in format to the columbarium. Name, date of birth, date of death. And then that would be filled as large panel. At the very top of the panel is uh, difficult to read, uh, but it's the affirmation of, of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. That would be the top border. And then uh, I believe the next slide should, whoops, is something else. Um, let's say, um, um, so I did mention that there's a, 
though it's strong feeling that there should be a water element as part of the <coughs> garden. And so we investigated a number of different <laughs> types and wanted to make sure that they were safe in terms of no one get hurt or injured, uh, uh, easy, easy to maintain. And so uh, this particular style, uh, the fountain is the is the, the urn, if you will, and it looks like it's stone, but it's actually um, a high density PVC, so it's not you can't break it, and it has a thick wall to it, which allows it to expand and contract with the ice and the heat and, and not be a problem. It's also hollow in that uh, it gets weighted with stone, so it cannot be tipped over. Directly underneath the, the urn is a reservoir that holds the water and there's a pump. And so this is where we would need uh, 24 hour, seven days a week power because we've been told that they can run 24 seven, 365 days a year. And that um, other than a, um, a maintenance plan that requires coming by a couple times a year to maybe change the filter and clean some of the, the traps, uh, it works just fine. Um, also, I'm showing um, light to illuminate the fountain. Um, I think that we there are opportunities on the columbarium and elsewhere to discreetly place uh, solar lights, uh, just be able to illuminate it at night or maybe on the ground or perhaps off the building because once the tree is gone, it's an entirely different space in terms of light up. So this is a kind of a view of that, <coughs> the plantings around it. Um, uh, it's a nice feature, it's not large, um, and um, fairly modest in price. Okay, now focusing on the, the decorative elements, I have located a couple of different e the examples of the Presbyterian logo, um, either as a three-dimensional stone relief. The area around the brass, large, brass plaque would probably be stucco or something that looks like that, not brick, um, because you have to drill into it. It's easier just to have a uniform, smooth surface. Um, and it would either be a brass plaque or uh, something three-dimensional that sits above, and it's the focal point of this entire column area. <coughs> Am I finished? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> yeah, one more. I guess not. Um, so, uh, and I have a, a rhetoric you look at more closely. Um, as you can see, the, the space is transformed without the tree. It shows the, the beautiful Renwick building across the street. Um, this would be nearly a uh, sun filled space. The columbarium, once again, tucked up against this wall, this rear wall of the sanctuary. And those two large ovals, if you will, are where the um, uh, scattered garden. Although, if there was an interest in, in cremains being scattered in other plantings, um, certainly by the fountain or along the other edge, um, that is a possibility. Um, you can see, uh, I think I'm showing four benches uh, spread throughout. Um, it appears to be an open space. It has about the same amount of grass uh, lawn as what's existing now. Um, and you can see the rather large uh, brickwork leading up to the columbarium, which would be appropriate for any type of uh, uh, memorial ceremony or something like that. Okay. Unless you want to brief this one, I mean, I'm happy to answer <laughs> questions later too. Thank you. Is the playground gone now? No, the playground's still in the back. So it's here. Yep. It's here. Um, but about this, this right playground. Yeah. Yeah. But about okay. this playground. Okay. This playground actually belongs to the preschool, and it is a preschool playground for very young children, and there's not much there for for children over the age of four. Our financial head honcho isn't here, so I get to brief the cost slides. So bear with me, I'll do my best here. Um, at this point, based on all the 
looking that we've done, the questions and answers, talking to construction companies, uh, doing our groundwork, we believe at this point, the estimated cost for the entire project um, would be roughly, as you can see, $169,000. Uh, 400 plus or minus, I'll leave the 400 there for you to think about. But anyway, that's kind of the cost. And again, that would include the design, the permits, the demo work, the masonry work, the foundational work that Jake talked about, uh, the decorative elements, uh, putting in and moving utility lines, and all the horticultural work around all of that. If you exclude the columbarium, so that's, again, just don't put the columbarium in, just that high part that's up there that saves $52,000. Uh, you can still do all the base work and not put in the columbarium, does everybody understand? Now what I'm talking about, we can put in the foundational work and everything that uh, Jake just showed you, but not put the columbarium up. So you'd end up with a low wall all the way across in front of where the, cur the current rail is out there as an option. Okay, that would save $52,000 by not putting in the columbariums themselves. Um, based on, as it was mentioned earlier by Connie and, and the other members of the committee, and I guess we probably should have all of them stand up and get recognized here in a minute, but we went out and asked, how much do you charge at various churches and locations? Just to get an idea of what the going rate is for burials on church properties. You can always go out and look for public things, but trying to get churches, it's a little bit more of an intimate thing, especially when you're not a member of that church, and asking them to give you that. those figures is a little bit challenging, but we were able to get them. On average, uh, the estimates that we, you see up there are pretty much the average of all the churches that we contacted for either of those two options. For columbarium, it's roughly anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000, depending on the church and the location that we got them. And for the scatter garden, it was estimated between 500 and 1,500. It all depended Again, on locations and things like that. Hawaii was a bit more expensive. Some of the places in Europe were a bit more expensive. Here in the United States are a little bit cheaper, but that kind of gives you an idea. Um, the other things that we would include in the cost that we didn't figure in would be the amount of engraving that's required either for the granite plaque that goes on the columbarium or the actual plaque itself that would go on the wall. We added, just added those figures up there to kind of give you the cost of that one. Um, the committee um, believes it shouldn't cost more than roughly $3,000 to maintain the site once everything's done. I mean, we'd have the annual fountain maintaining, uh, potentially somebody to come in and do the weeding in the, around the scatter garden itself, those kinds of things. Uh, the grass is still the grass on the left or the right. It doesn't change, so that cost doesn't really change. Um, some maintenance potentially for lighting and things like that from time to time. But we're estimating a figure of roughly $3,000. Mr. Copley, I don't know if that's close, but that's we're giving it our best shot. That's kind of what we think at this point. Um, so that covers there. Um, if you were doing a commercial burial at this point for some of the local places here um, that are here in the city and or just over in Spotsy County or Stafford, uh, it's roughly $10,000 uh, for a burial nowadays. Uh, some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less, but we want to just give you a cost figure for what burials cost. Um, going to do as it says here uh, doing a church-wide survey at this point just to give you uh, an idea now we've given you some figures is there still interest last time around when they did the survey uh, we didn't put any figures on it we didn't know it was just were you interested potentially in, ha in, in having a scatter garden uh, cremains buried uh, or a columbarium on the church campus this one now has figures associated with it you can see the figures so when you get the, the survey in a few minutes uh, please keep those figures in mind as you answer the questions Next slide, Jim. Uh, it's hard to guesstimate how fast we could recapture this, and we aren't at this point doing a capital campaign for it. We know the church it, it right now doesn't need another capital campaign. We didn't finish the first one, so we're not going down that road at this point in time. <coughs> we think if you if you if, if you go off the figures that were previously put up, uh, so there's 32 yeses for the scatter garden and uh, 23 yeses for the columbarium. At those figures, you can see what. Uh, that equals, you know, $101,000. Um, the maybes, there was 24 and 26 respectively for another 102,000, so the grand total if added together would be 203. If everyone that said yes and maybe previously uh, decided to be interred on the church campus. So it would pay for itself at some point in time. <clears throat> Realizing that it has to be built, there has to be initial outlay, we all know that, but this at least shows you that ultimately it would be recaptured. Um, let's see, what else do I need to cover on this one? Um, we also could potentially recoup costs faster if we uh, uh, kept the, uh, moving things, uh, prices up for inflation. Uh, one other thought was potentially to the, um, as Jake mentioned, uh, the 
new uh, area in front of the columbarium, that new walkway, is to potentially sell bricks. And so even if someone isn't buried, but you wanted to honor a previous member of the church or a family member, you could buy a brick. And so all of those bricks would get engraved. We'd sell those for a certain amount of money, and that potentially would start um, putting money into the fund for this purchase. Okay? So it's just an option that's been discussed. Again, it's not a formal proposal to any of you today. I don't want you to walk away saying we're going to do that. It's just something that was thought about as a way to initiate the cost, reduce the cost to the church overall, uh, and get some money, uh, funds up front to start the construction. So I just want to put that out there for all of you as well. Next slide. So as part of this process, uh, many of us were surprised to discover that we actually have a plot in the city cemetery uh, for the church. We didn't know that, and we didn't know how big it was, or how did we use it, or any of those things. But I thought we'd uh, let everybody know that this is out there, and one of the things that was thought about, and the reason the design change, was that we were thinking about putting site-specific remains in the city cemetery plot. That way, out here on the grass, there wouldn't be any remains for people to run around on top of the grass. Does that make sense for everybody? So the thought was we would move the, that piece, the site-specific, you know, uh, eight inch by eight inch hole in the ground would all go over to the city cemetery. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about how we would uh, mark that and show that. Um, currently the cost uh, to get buried in the city cemetery is about $2,000. Uh, we'd expect to have to pay that price to the city cemetery whenever it was, it, it was done here. Uh, we've currently done one burial over there uh, since we discovered that this was in place. Uh, Ruth Moreau was interred over there just for those of you who didn't know. Uh, uh, where is the city cemetery? Sure, great, great question. I've got to ask you to put that in the car for me. Thanks. Uh, for those of you who don't know, do you all know where Washington Avenue is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, right along Washington Avenue says Confederate Cemetery and the big thing there? Well, it's not all Confederate Cemetery. It's actually part city and the rest Confederate. So if you go in the Washington Street gate and walk straight in, you're on a gravel path. Everything to your left is the city cemetery. Everything to your right is the Confederate Cemetery. If you go down to the first intersection and make a left, you will end up to our, our plot. It isn't marked, but like we can give you directions on how to get there. There is a small map you get when you walk in that kind of shows you where it is. And the Baptist Church site, which I'll show you in a second, is right next to ours, so it makes it easier to figure out where our plot is. Uh, our plot is very... Sorry? How big is the site? It's small. It's pretty small. Um, I wish I could remember off the top of my head. Um, I haven't gone out and actually measured it, measured it, Jim. Um, we think we could probably put somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 plus um, again, eight, eight by eight windows. If you go by the city cemetery rules and regulations, you can actually, uh, if you don't use a, um, a, 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 a yeah, thing, a thing inside there, you can actually go back over and rebury again on certain spot, um, certain times. They so I think it's about 30 by 40 feet. I mean, yeah. That's my guess, you know. How yeah, did you all find out that we have this? Well, it, it actually, believe it or not, it's in Dr. Alvey's book, but if, if you don't read page 128, you know, paragraph three, he didn't know it was there. Um, some people in the church, some people in the church kind of knew it was there, but they didn't say anything. Um, we found out when, we, we also found out that we still had a person's remains here that still hasn't been interred. Uh, so that was another reason for doing the, our homework here. Um, so it was something new that we didn't know. Uh, we've now learned, we've actually had our first internment there. Uh, the session has a draft policy on how we're going to open that up for other families and everybody else so we can get through that process. But it was something new and uh, something learned. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. Okay. Well, downtown churches all received by the cemetery. Okay. Originally, originally, the four big downtown churches got a plot. St. George's, the Methodist Church, Baptist Church and our church. Yep. When was that? St. George's. About 1820 something. Jerry? Is the church allowed to create, put structures like a caravan? Carib carib oh. Okay, well, let me, let me, Jim, next slide. Yeah, I, I planted these questions perfectly. So. <laughs> There are two ministers and yep. some of their children right. buried there. There are two box. previous ministers from our church are buried there along with their children. Uh, you can go see it, and they were actually full of graves. Uh, we're recommending from here on out that we go with cremains to save space, uh, and that's kind of the going thing nowadays. Uh, if we start putting a bunch of large uh, caskets and all into that space, then it will be used up fairly quickly. 
Um, so to the right hand side is what the Baptist Church has. So again, if you're walking on the gravel path, that'll be on your left. Our plot is the next one further down uh, towards the south. Um, you can kind of see the open space that's right there in front of all those headstones that are there. That's our actual plot. It doesn't have any of the graves that are currently on our site in that picture. And yes, we can put up something like the specific marker, Jerry, uh, on the site to recognize all the people that would be interred there. Uh, that's just one rendering that we draw, uh, that Jake was kind enough to draw for us to show the, the Celtic cross, and then we would have the, uh, the various names there. It can be a different design. It can be as big or as small as you want to make that. Remember, the bigger you make that and put it in the plot, fewer plots are available. But you just, could also do a scatter plot in there. Correct, you could also do a scatter garden there. Uh, the one for the city has is outlined in a wall, uh, and they, put, so. they do remains there, there as no well. There are no scatter gardens in that cemetery right now. But it means you can't put it. Could we put a columbarium there? Could we put a columbarium there? Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. But not at the not, not nearly, we think, as big as the one we currently have due to the fact that the heights, they're probably going to restrict the height. We don't know what the number exactly would be. But I'll, I'll say probably no higher than this. Based on the other headstones and memorials that are there, I don't there think they're going to want to call them here. There are none in there at the moment. Doesn't mean you couldn't get them. The bylaws don't say yes and they don't say no. I'm going to be up front with everybody here. Jerry. Well, have we ever talked to the city cemetery group who matched this thing on potential? Yes. So, so we have talked to the city cemetery once, and they said we could put a columnarium in as long as it's low enough level. They didn't have a problem with that. Okay. And we didn't specifically ask, I don't think. Not a scatter garden, but I believe yeah, we, there'd be something else we'd have to approach with them. But yes, you could move. You could move everything we just talked about here over there. They are constructive discussions. You know, they, yes, they, they were constructive yeah, discussions. They came to one of our meetings. Yeah. Oh, good. Yep, they actually came to one of our meetings to help us out. That's where we got the figures. Uh, those came from them on the current cost of the city cemetery. Like most of the time, I drive by there. Gates locked. Okay. The, well, the, 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 the drive-through gate's always locked. The walk-in gate's almost always open. Just, just for reference, the um, the space that uh, we're looking at behind the church, uh, the, the the city cemetery is probably about a quarter of that. So when you say, can we do columbarium or scatter garden or site specific? Just bear in mind that you're dealing with maybe 25 percent of the space that is shown on the sketches. Okay, guys, well, we got two more slides, and we'll, we'll open up for the rest of the questions when we finish. Okay. Um, issue still in work, just so you're aware of it. Uh, we're drafting up a policy for the session. Uh, we don't have a policy, so we're po drafting a policy for the current uh, use of the city cemetery plot. We gave them a draft policy potentially for church campus, uh, so it'll be up to session to finalize all of that and what the rules are going to be. Who can be interred, who can't be interred, you know, how many relations uh, in your family can we go before they, can't, they cut you off? I, I have no idea at this point. Uh, but that's all, all to be done. Uh, we would have to finally go to the city of Sim uh, Fredericksburg for actual permits and architectural review board hearing and historical society. We'll probably have to be present while we dig, uh, just in case there's things that down there. So those are things that are to be determined downstream. But those are things that we, we wanted to make sure we were aware of. Uh, next slide, Jim. So next steps, uh, we're doing this meeting today. Uh, Milton is kind enough to have recorded it, so it will also be uh, a link on the church website for those that couldn't be here today, so they'll have that information. Uh, we will create a link uh, for the um, survey on the, on, the, on the church website for those, again, who couldn't be here today so they can fill it out. It's only three questions, so we would ask that before you leave today, you fill it out for us. It really would help. Um, and we're going to use the above information to inform some of our next steps. Again, we're not going forward with any final designs or anything else until we have a new pastor and minister selected and some other things happen. So that's kind of where things are at. I think that's it, and I'm open for questions. Mr. Farley, sir. Excellent presentation by all parties. Um, I do have one technical question. I noticed the water reservoir underneath the fountain Correct. appears to be very close to the surface. How is that not going to freeze in February? I can't, I can't answer that. Potentially, they put a little of antifreeze in it or something else. Well, there's a know. excuse me. There's a, a water pump that runs continuously. The water goes from the uh, reservoir up through the fountain, dribbles down over the sides, and uh, the just so you know, the the contact is a local vendor located just south on Route One, about five miles from here, and he has said that in this our environment, 
it run, can run 24 7 so year the round. Move, the moving water is the saving grace. Yeah. It, okay. it, it, yeah, the moving water saves grace on that, and also it may be necessary to uh, top it off uh, because some of it evaporates or splashes or goes away. Might also be refilled by natural rainwater too, because right. it's it's a little grid. Okay. But, but, yeah, the, the place up at Stafford, I guess, runs twenty four seven. Now you can go see one, uh, and they've had they, what, if I remember correct, Barbara, they never had any freezing issues for theirs that are uh, as an example for us to see. So. Except only if we have an extended period of time where we have like zero whatever, would you have to turn it off in order to drain it? But he said very seldom that that happened in this area. I noticed Next the site plan didn't include this large grassy area, but the parking lot. Correct. Is a location. That is correct. Why? Why didn't we choose behind the parking lot for it? Uh, the committee felt that. Um, I, I can't speak for every person on the committee, um, but that's kind of like hiding it away and potentially that we may need to build out the parking lot at some point in time because we already have limited parking. So we didn't want to take away that option for the church in the future. So we, we planted it on where, where we thought uh, would be the best and most central location. Uh, it still allows reuse of that spot. You want, you know, once it's all up, that brick space could be used for a class. It could still be used when we have picnics and everything else. So it's open and available. So we're trying to. It takes, it takes out a tree that's only been here since 1962. How tall was the column there? How tall is the column there, Jake? Uh, uh, let's see. Well, just rough. Back up. Well, uh, the, the, the highest part, it's about this tall. It's sort of a human scale. So at where that panel is, <coughs> it's about this high. And where it steps down, it's like so. Oh, well, I was thinking. Here's a question about the weather. If it's in bad weather, you're going to have the stairwell kind of shaded, so if it's full of snow, it's going to be a long time before it melts. Snow? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that is the fact that it's tucked up near there. Uh, I mean, certainly, you know, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't figure it out in here. Okay. We also haven't figured out a final lighting plan because we wanted to consider security of the campus and improve the lighting all at the same time. Which could be mounted on the back side. Back side of the columbarium. Okay. Yes. So this is about the stairs which are uh, very steep and really, have you, if you all consider it with the column there right there, uh, you know, some improvement to those stairs due to the requirement that goes up and down all the time. We, did, we didn't consider a cost estimate for uh, enhancing or modifying the stairs at this point. Could that be done as part of an overall project? Sure. Uh, we just didn't, uh, it was hard for us to, we are trying to keep focused on what we were asked to take a look at. So we didn't go that route. Okay. You know, I think you're, you're, you, you, you did what you were supposed to do, and the mission is right. But has, has anyone thought about potential, you know, in our sanctuary, we have some egress issues about life and safety of doors and second exit into there. And if, if a solution might be a door on the side or a door on the whatever. I, we don't know what that solution is. Does come, 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 when you box in that area for, for, for this activity, would that limit the opportunity for other egress and other church? So, so the short answer is, is I don't know if the church structure could handle making two doors on the other wall. That's a whole different discussion on the weight bearing and everything else. Would be those. In, in theory, yes, it could block the exit there, but we already have a stairwell and a hole in the ground. It's, it's in the way too, Jerry. So. I can't answer that question if you're going to make an exit out of the back of the sanctuary, or excuse me, the front of the sanctuary at this point in time. Robert, you had your hand up next. So, so more of a comment, this, this uh, especially on the weekends, is a very heavily traveled area for people not in our congregation to go through and come to community dinners and stuff like that. So I don't see it as being a very positive area, a quiet area. I would never consider that to be very quiet. Um, the second comment would be, I, it seems like there's a safety concern with with the columbarium being backed up to the steps as far as kids climbing up on the top of that and then be a 10 or 11 foot drop to the bottom of the steps. Um, I, I would be very concerned as a parent that, you know, my kid's not doing that. I can't, I can't answer to how people will act or not act on it. You have rails there now, the kids step up and climb around yeah, on, and they've got to... put a six-foot structure. I, I, I got it, Robert. I understand. Kids might want to climb on it. I got yeah. it. I, 
you know, I can't tell you we're not going to put barbed wire around it to keep them off of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's either, you know, kids will do what they'll do, or kids will know that's, that's something that's very sacred and stay away from it. But I don't, I can't, you can't, I mean, it's an issue. I right. think we can agree it's a It's a safety issues. issue. I got it. We heard you. Column barium basically right up against the side, this sidewalk here. We, we didn't think about flipping it that way. We were trying to, as Jake said, kind of mirror what was inside the church on the back side of the church yeah. and give some, some features to the church wall on the back side, especially once the tree is gone. It'd be kind of a big naked brick wall. So we we're trying to add some architectural features. Well, but also, that. actually, is there other place to look at? Yeah, we Column actually area. looked at all four uh, sides the uh, up against the education building facing uh, Princess Anne and also the other. So actually we looked at all four cardinal corners, if you will. And and, and Session saw those, yeah. the different renderings that we had for different places on the campus. But Session never voted on it because we didn't have a forum. Again, Session got the whole thing done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all Session voted on was to allow us to brief you and what the <laughs> thing is. Right, yeah. the Session also approved the current version after there was three down to one and that's what the committee's been working on since and that's where we currently are sitting uh, it's, 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 it's again it's an information brief for everybody we're not asking you for a decision today we're not asking whether you're going to other than you know, to uh, see what kind of interest you still have uh, is the location in the right one if it isn't tell us where you would want it to be uh, if you don't want Site specific buried over uh, over in the city cemetery, and you want it back on campus. Tell us that. If you want all three options here on the campus, you know we can we we don't have Ouija boards. Uh, we don't we can't read your minds. Uh, all we all we're working with is the information that we provided. And you know for basically a year and a half, they worked with no information from any of you. So we thought now is the time to get the information so we could move forward. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to any uh, the chairman. You got any additional things you want to say, Connie, before we close them up and start the survey? Other than, I know in the very beginning, our vision for this memorial garden, be it columbarium, be it scatter garden, was a place that <clears throat> kids would be able to gather. We pictured, you know, I picture my grandkids sitting there maybe eating an ice cream cone. That wouldn't be a bad thing. The whole idea is to get this whole, I, the, from birth to death, and in death, we belong to God. And to stop making it such a, ah, I don't want to talk about it, to this is a wonderful place to gather, to be, to remember in any way, shape, or form. We had pictured um, the Sunday school classes going out and sitting there, maybe reading a book. Who cares if they play ball? Are they remembering people? Are they talking about it? Great. You know, it's just a usable, wonderful space where we can be both in life and celebrate death at the same time, and those people that have been here and part of our lives. So this is what drove us to be able to do these kind of things and, and put the water in there for baptism and as part of creation. Um, <clears throat> all of this was thought through. It was expressed to the different um, <clears throat> architects that came through and gave us designs and um, and continues to be part of our thought. When we found about the city cemetery, yes, it needs a memorial of some sort there to mark the names. It needs to be fixed up. It's really not a pleasant place to look at and it, it needs some work there as well. If you put in a columbarium, then you're taking away many different places that you could have interned site specific. There is, as as a in, in as the, an option. In the city cemetery. Yeah, the city cemetery. In the city cemetery. Um, so I just want to thank you, the whole community, for all the thought you put into this. And years ago, when Alan first came here, I was on a memorial. Party committee, Ann Rowe, 
we started one and we thought we had some very productive meetings and then it just fizzled out. So I know you really were. And, and, and we knew that. And so the people that have been on this committee from uh, Gary Vaughn, Barbara Howe, Linda Ben, um, <coughs> Jake, myself, Jen Rowe, the Caden, and Dave Peterson. I'm trying to think. And Bill. And Bill. And Bill. <laughs> and I would just say, when we started, we looked at cloistered models. Where it's all separated off. Kind of like movies. And we, uh, we rejected that. We wanted it to be open and lovely and part of our life. I really like the idea about the uh, bricks, you know, Memorial Bricks, too, as a addition to this, because I can think of, uh, of at least one person around the top of my head that would love to have a brick for him here is Dr. Allen. Yeah. You know, he, he, had, he, is, he was such a, a pillar of the church for so long, and the history book, you know, here he's... It, his and that head. would be a way. And they're, they're very... I visited um, the Presbyterian Church in Southport, <laughs> North Carolina and they have a brick wall and that's how they funded their memorial garden and it's very tastefully funded. I like the idea that you wait and contribute and honor somebody even though their ashes may not be in our common area. So it's, it's a great idea. So, I'm just going to speak for the committee real quick. Thank you all A for taking some time out of your busy schedules to be here to listen, to give us feedback, uh, and I would just ask on your way out, there's some uh, <coughs> forms on the table over there, if you would just please um, make notes on them. If you want to put your name on them, great. If you want us to follow up with you, then please write that on the survey form so we can do that. <coughs> Otherwise, all it is is just information on a piece of paper with no names attached, which is fine, uh, but we don't know, we, we can't follow up with you if we don't have, have your information. So if you please uh, do that as well. Um, again, this will be available and up, uh, loaded up on the church website in the near future. Uh, so please let other members of the church know they have an opportunity to do this. Uh, we hope uh, after we get your input, uh, the committee will probably make some more decisions and next steps. And again, we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern until some other things get done. But we wanted to give you all this an update on where things were today. We appreciate your time and attention today. So thank you. Okay.